Hello everybody. Oh, chicken bottom. Um, how is everybody today? It's Steffi here from The Makers with part three of the standing chicken or as you just saw the lying down chicken. This one I don't want to stand up because it just looks absolutely awful. It's like a headless chicken. I've seen lots of these um, over the last few days over on Facebook, um, which reminds me I should mention if you're not yet a member of our Everyone a Maker Facebook group, then um, hop over and um, ask to become a member. But we are basically turning a headless chicken into a nice looking chicken. So it won't be long now. Don't worry, nearly there. And um, that's all happening today. If you have missed part one and two, you can catch up because they're um, still available to watch on YouTube, um, which is where they're staying. And if you're watching today, Tuesday the 23rd, then you're also, um, you can win a prize, which I will tell you about in a minute. And uh, if you're watching this on Facebook as a replay on the 25th of um, March 2021 at 7 p.m., then you're also in for a chance to win a prize. So everybody is happy. But if you're watching this anytime in the future, then you just have to enjoy the tutorial rather than going away with something um, nice to um, to use or spend as well. So today's um, price, and I think I've got a some. Oh, yeah, I should also just say that um, Alicia is um, supporting the live stream today, so she'll be whispering in my ear if there are any questions or any queries that you may have. Um, Emma is having some time off, so um, and the best thing to prove that is by showing you that um, she's the master of all um, graphic designs and whilst the graphic design that was designed by one of my um, very nice colleagues is also very good it's just not like Emma's but um, uh, so today's price is a £15 gift voucher from the makers. How amazing is that? And uh, the question that I look would like you to answer is what will you call your hen or cockerel and why? Give us, make us, give us some laughs today. I really do need a, a little bit of cheering up. Um, give us some laughs. Um, remember you're watching this either today, Tuesday the 23rd of March at, um, it's actually 1pm, which is where we are right now, or on Thursday at um, the 25th at 7pm. So, Right, let's have a look who's here today. Um, I should also um, just mention that you might have spotted that I've got a candle lighting here today because most of you will know that today, um, 23rd of March 2021, is exactly 12 months um, since the whole of the UK was declared in lockdown. And um, of course, today is a day where we're all thinking about the loved ones that um, either you or many of you um, have lost. So our thoughts are with all of those who have suffered a loss and um, and we just hope that um, the next 12 months will um, definitely be like the light at the end of the tunnel that we can all see and um, I don't know, just have lots and lots more laughs, but we're starting today with the laughs, okay? We're not gonna, we're not going to be um, down in the dumps. We're actually going to have a good time today um, because the chicken wants a happy face. That's basically it. So let's have a look who's here today. Um, we have got quite a few of you watching already. Remember to give us the thumbs up on YouTube. I'm also delighted to say that we're now over 3,000 subscribers. So thank you very much to those who have um, subscribed, told your friends to subscribe, um, bribe people to subscribe, um, threaten them to subscribe. Keep doing what you're doing. We do want lots and lots more subscribers because that makes us happy. And we've got here Sandra today. Jane is there. Hello. Um, so basically, um, like I said, Emma is not here today, but um, Alicia is standing in for her. Um, did I say Donna already? Hello, Donna. I, I've mentioned you twice, all the better. Can't mention enough, Donna, can we? Um, Carol is there, different Carols. Um, Claire, Eva is there. Uh, Laura is there. Hi, Laura. Um, Diane, did I mention Diane already? I can't remember today who I'm... No, no, I haven't mentioned Diane. We've got Amanda. Um, Vampire Venom. I love that name. It's amazing. Rachel is there with Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Um, Joe is there. And Rachel, of course. Sorry, Rachel. I didn't mean to be rude. Um, Dawn is there. Um, Serena is there. Uh, Diana is there. And we've got Joe and I think I'm repeating myself now. Uh, going. Oh, we've got, already got suggestions for names. So let's have a quick look. Um, what have we got? Oh, Diana, you're still um, you you're you're still in the morning. We are already in the afternoon. Um, 
And so Ava says, my chick's name is Melody and my rooster is called Moody. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Roosters can be a bit moody. I suppose chicks could be too. Um, I've, I've actually seen an amazing version of, of this chicken. I don't want to mention any names, but it's a very famous, um, it's a famous hen that um, um, it's, it's um, how can I say? It's a film called um, Hen Legging. Okay, that's it. I'm not saying the name. You can um, have a guess what that is. Um, my rooster will be named Bashful Bertie as he is shy of Batty Betty. That's Donna. Um, I'm going to call her Eglantine, says Dawn. Um, you're not telling me why you're calling your roosters or hens that, but um, are you still going to go into the into the draw for the competition? Um, which, of course, is always completely random. So we're not uh, judging you by the beauty of the name that you have chosen or any other beauty that you might possess. And I'm going to go overhead with the camera now because that's best to um, show you what we're doing next. So I'm, I'm very intent on following the instructions. I've cleaned my earth mat just a minute ago. Um, and we are, we've got as far as this. So this is the, this is the, the chicken. Um, the best chicken name that um, we've ever had of a chicken, I might have mentioned that last time, but I say it again when it cr still cracks me up, but we inherited a hen and she was called Oven Ready. Um, she was never ready for the oven, I promise you. We never, we would never do that to her. So I've also tried um, very uh, failingly to uh, put a rooster's tail on uh, last time and um, I had I got the giggle several times. I promise today I will be, I will be good. Okay, so... Chicken needs next. It needs um, it needs a comb, it needs a beak, and it needs a wattle. I will tell you a funny story though. When we first wrote, when Sophie and I first wrote the book um, "Making Needle Felted Animals," and there is a chicken in there as well, um, I used to call the wattle waddle, and nobody knew what I was talking about. So I said, "Oh, I'm going to give that chicken a waddle." <laughs> <laughs> now I think it's very funny because that was obviously very confusing but I know now it's a wattle though I, every time I say I have to think about it so you uh, what you're going to do next is you're going to take some of the red wool from the standing chicken pack if you haven't got that yet I think we've got a few left if you want to catch up and um, get all the materials to make your chicken so you've got your um, bit of red wool here it's it 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 doesn't really we just say a pinch because at the end of the day um, they can have big or small um, combs. So this is for the comb, by the way, not for the bottle. And all you're going to do is in the most traditional um, sense now, you're making a needle felted piece. And um, for this, because we want it to be sort of slightly curved, we are folding this over. So you've got like a semi, is that what you call a semi moon? No, you don't call that. Um, you call a sickle moon shape, a half moon shape, not a semi moon. Um, I'm sure there's that that word semi moon doesn't exist, and you just felt that flat. Now remember, when you felt anything flat, you have got to remember to pick it off your mat. Even the uh, wonderful earth mat, even there, you've got to pick it off at some point. Otherwise, you do fasten it on. Though I will say the earth mat is is really forgiving for when you have to pick up flat felted wool, and um, you then you turn it round and you felt it on the other side as well. So you keep the rounded part at the um, at the base um, as much unfelt, unfelted as possible so this bit here needs to be nice and wispy but you can really felt the rest um, solid because we the, to get the shape of the comb later we're going to cut into it so we, a little bit like with the wings if you've done this do you re remember we cut into the wings it actually if you felt it really well you can make some very precise shapes here so lifting this off turning it round I don't know what you've all been up to, but the weather here where I am today is really spring-like. So it, it makes me feel definitely, makes me feel happy. And I I, um, I thought I'm going to wear a very light sweater today just, um, just because it's nice weather. Who of you have always decided last minute in the morning what to wear? I have always been like this, which is why I'm very grateful that I um, was brought up in Germany where you we didn't have any school uniform because I think I would have been really, really upset not being able to choose the colours I was going to wear every day. And uh, when I go away, um, my colleagues often laugh at me when I go away to any of the shows that we haven't, of course, been to for over a year now. I always take way more clothes than I actually need to wear because I need to have all the choices of colours 
because I don't know what I'm going to feel like on Tuesday or Thursday. So it um, it gives me the option and it's it's usually about colours. Um, so I'm very, I don't know, I'm just weird, I know. But maybe some of you are just as weird as me. So let, let me know if that is the case. Right, I'm felting this nice and flat. Of course, if you've got a, a three needle felting tool, use that too. And if you've got any other multi-tools, you can use them as well. I, um, if you've got the brush mat with a seven needle felting tool, this is the time to put them into action. And um, if you've got the um, um, prim tool, which I'm using the just the single needle holder here, then you can use that too with um, the flat pieces just to speed your work up. So you can um, definitely uh, put all of these into good action. Now this is still very flat um, and, and quite straight. So you could start by felting into it a little bit more to make it a bit more head felted so that it becomes a little bit rounder. But it doesn't really matter because you can also felt it on with a slight pleat in there. Um, but if you want to, you can now get that shape to be a bit more... It's, it's definitely more like a, um, a moon shape now, isn't it? If it was yellow, it would actually look like a moon. Get it nicely felted. Keep turning it over, felting it from both sides. And um, once you've got a nice solid piece of felt, that, that looks sort of quite good. Um, then you are going to put this onto the chicken's head. Oh, that's the wrong way around. Now, what you need to understand with chickens is that I very nearly brought one of my real hens in, but um, I didn't know what to do with her um, once I showed her to you. And she, I can't let, let her run around here. She'll poo everywhere. It's disgusting. Um, anyway, so what you need to understand with chickens, and this is quite important, is that um, they haven't really got a head. Their, their head is like the extension to the, of their neck. And then they've got a beak. And the beak is, can you see, it's like almost an extension of the, of the top of the head. So what you want to do is you want to put that comb sort of like here, because right underneath that side at the front where the comb is, that's exactly where the beak's gonna go. So um, to fasten this on, trying to keep this in the camera so you can see it, use your single needle, which, um, is it gone? There, hiding, the chicken is hiding it. So just felt it on first of all that it's in place. Don't worry too much if it's um if it's symmetrical or or whatever. Just get it on so that you um you can let go of it and then you can uh, be preciser, more precise even. I think you say that precise. No, it's actually preciser, isn't it? Two syllables you can add the er, and if it's um two uh, if it's three syllables, then you have to say more. Is that right? I think so. Right. Um. All this um, English grammar is coming back from my school times now. I, ha I used to have a really good and amazing English teacher. And if we wrote an essay, um, we had to write the essay and then she'd take it home and she'd correct it. And then she would make us um, write out the rules of all the things that we got wrong. So the grammatical rules I had to get find them first of all of course and then write it out what, what it was so if you had a spelling mistake you had to find different examples and then she would do she would correct for spelling your correction and then you got that back mm. <laughs> and this could have gone on forever until there wasn't a single mistake left I used to love it because it made you look up all these rules about grammar which is one of the reasons why I love grammar right so I've, I'm fastening this on and then at some point you're gonna have to look at it from the front to see whether it's actually in the center in the middle of the head it's like a middle parting um, of the um, that's where it needs like a Mohican basically so then you can work a little bit more on securing it properly now that you know it's in the right place so you're stabbing basically if I go a little bit slower you're stabbing into the red and into um, your orange um, um, cover of the chicken as well and you're um, basically stabbing the comb on as, as best as you can so it's nice and secure give the chicken a mohican I'm not worried about cutting the um, the uh, jaggedy bits into the top yet just get the get it on um, you might want to use your coarse needle I've, I've been persevering with a what is that I think it's a medium needle <clears throat> just have a quick check because it does seem to take yeah it's a in fact, it's a fine needle what I'm using. No wonder I'm not getting very far with this. Right, I'm going to switch to um, a medium needle now. There we go. Ah, now we're talking. Yeah, definitely don't use a fine needle as I did. It, um, it will take a long time. So get your coarse needle, stab it on so it's nice and secure. Shape it around the head 
So you've got it literally it, it at the mon moment I don't know what's the front or the back well I do because I know the wings and the legs are pointing that way but um, from just looking at the head it could be either way so you can get it um, felt it on and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the beak so I'll let you catch up with that first let's just see what um what exciting names we've got e exciting names um let's have a look my rooster I'm uh uh Oh, Di Diane has noticed. I look like spring has arrived. Spring has arrived, definitely today. Um, it might go away again for a bit, but it's definitely uh, here now. Um, so, um, Vampire Venom says, I have needle felted daffodils in my window for the day of reflection. Oh, that's really nice. I've got some daffod daffodils, needle felted daffodils as well. There is actually a tutorial on YouTube. Where have I put them? seen them a second ago I pulled them out of the um, display the other day oh yes there they are let's let's um, show you these so these are really really simple to make because they're actually needle felted onto felt sheets so there is a tutorial of how to make um, a daffodil and there's still plenty of time to make daffodils because they're still out in the gardens and um, and of course Easter is just around the corner so that reminds me actually just very quickly you might have seen we've shared um, a little tutorial of how to make tiny 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 little mini chicks and <clears throat> it seems to have been um, quite a popular project um, from what we could gather seeing all the responses on on Facebook so I just show you this this is actually it's come out of the making simple needle felts book and as you might know, the book is split into different um, seasons. So these are the little chicks we're talking about here, surrounding the mo mother hen. And there is actually a, a instructions in there to make the hen. Now the hen has got a tiny little secret. And um, because all the chicks fit inside the hen, because she's got a hollow underneath her. So that is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a chicken, a different type of chicken. It's quite small, but you could make this too, this hen, and maybe put fit an, a Cadbury egg underneath or another Easter egg for Easter. So that's like a, a, a little surprise. But this is basically um, the um, tutorial that we've shared or like a mini, mini tutorial that we have shared um what else is there in in their Easter or spring wise? Um, so you've got you got you can make them in different colors. The chickens, you've got primroses. I absolutely love primroses, but you've got to make them in large numbers and then put them together like in clusters. They look so amazing. And this is uh, using water soluble paper, but you don't dissolve the paper. Got of course our baby barn owl. Um, so this is all about um, spring spring and chicks and stuff um if you're in if you want to make tiny lambs we have got in our um in our winter section because we're putting them with the nativity but you can of course make these little sheep and lambs as well for um for for your spring decoration remember we have got a chick a larger chick and a bunny kit that um that is still available to buy before easter and then it will be discontinued afterwards right um oh yes names oh we've got a, a first time viewer yoohoo ashley welcome first time in youtube event um it's morning till i have had my lunch sister <laughs> oh i love it i love it yes that's amazing i love that i have to remember that my chicken is called Jazz, as Wings reminded me of Jazz Hans. Jazz Hans, yeah, that's it. Um, that's what um, Ashley says. Natasha says, it, that's me. I know, Natasha, you were the one who um, made a chicken from a film, from a famous film called Chicken Leg. Um, no, it's called Hen Legging. That's what I decided to call it. But you all know what I'm talking about. I don't even know why I'm making it um, into a mystery. Um, Carol says, mine's going to be a rooster called Gregory, as in Gregory Bank. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is why I need to know why you're calling your chickens that. Carol says, mine's going to be, oh no, I just said that. Um, I made a Bertie rooster, says Diane Baker. And then she says, end, but there's nothing after and. Um, Natasha says, my chicken is called Ginger. 
after her namesake from the film. Ah, oh, don't know who you're talking about. I absolutely loved her though. Um, Natasha, uh, that was Natasha Carroll says, uh, love yours, Natasha. So go and have a look and find Natasha on Facebook. Uh, Natasha, have you shared it on Everyone and Maker? You must do. I think you have. Then you'll find Natasha's um, chicken there. It's it's really amazing. Vampire says, Egbert won. When I make him, I'm planning on making Egbert the careless from Ox Ventures and I'm pretending that Dob hatched the egg Corizon gave him. <sighs> okay, it's a and d group. Is this rude? That's what I need to find out first because I'm not meant to say anything um, that's unsuitable on YouTube. So I hope D&D &D is something like, um, something like delicious and delightful. I don't know what D&D &D stands for. So um, hopefully it's something really, really positive. Well, it is now, delicious and delightful. Um, oh, Stephanie's asking me, how did I get my earth mat so clean? Well, with um, the earth mat um, cleaner, of course. It's this thing. comes in different colours, so you don't get a choice. We'll, we couldn't be bothered to give you a choice. We'll just give you what we think you um, we should have. comes in different colours, and it, it's really great. It picks up the fibres. Look. Yeah, you can use them again. You can make a whole other chicken of it. Yeah, it's a really great um, brush that we're using to do this. It, it's got um, sort of two quite sturdy um, rubber um, sheets running side by side. And um, I'm dying to use it on my carpet upstairs to see how much cut and dog hair I get up with it, but I keep forgetting. Right, let's get back to um, the chicken because it needs a beak. So very similar to how you've done your... Um, tail on the chicken this one here and um, very similar to you how you've done probably more similar to the tail than to the to the wings um, you will be using some yellow now chickens have got actually they've got like a slightly curved where's the chicken there they've got a slightly curved um, beak that's sort of like almost like a hawk um, and so you do what you've done before is you fold your wool in half it's folded this way. So you keep the folded edge at the top and then you're rolling this really tight so that you, you're you making a cone shape. So it's slightly different from what you've done before, but it's also similar. And um, roll it in as tight as you can. There. Once you've done that, then take your felting needle and close the shape up. And obviously what you need to do now is you need to concentrate so that this bit here is, is going to stay fluffy so you can hold on to that because you're not felting that and then that stops you from stabbing yourself. And then you're just um, constantly stabbing into this shape towards the front to make it pointy. So you go over and over. Remember to keep turning it because you don't want a flat beak. You want a round beak. And, um, and start out with your coarse needle and then potentially go down to your medium needle to defluff it a little bit more. Um, if the beak is too long, then you can um, stab into it at a shallow um, shallow angle. So can you see how that is uh, pulling the beak um, that way? So I can make it a lot more stubby. And um, because it's a stylized chicken, we're not giving you the exact measurements because you can make that beak extra long or extra short because you're making, you're designing your own chicken, basically. So it doesn't have to be a carbon copy of what you can see in the instructions, but you can design your own chicken. At some point, you need to just firm up the, um, the very end of that beak as well, and then maybe go over it again to make it more pointy again, because uh, we're gonna have to needle felt a mouth, a mouth onto there, like a line for a mouth. So uh, we want to do this in a minute. Let's go over to the next page. So I actually am doing what I'm meant to be doing here and not make up my own stuff, which is what I'm very prone in doing. Um, and so when this beak is nice and firm, you do want it to be nice and firm. So, cause we're gonna um, add some detail to it now. Uh, you could go, let's just see if I can give it another few steps with a slightly finer noodle. You're gonna take a tiny bit of black. Now this is the tricky bit where you've got to uh, draw a line from one side of the beak all the way around to the other side of the beak. Now you have a choice. You can give it a smiling face. First of all, make your um, take a wisp of the black and make it into with your fingers twist it into a, a strand and I'm um, you don't need to do this straight away I'm just going to show you what you could be so if you give it a smiling face you fasten one end on and then you're going um, all the way around take some off it's a bit long 
and fasten it on the other end. So you're trying to do an up, uh, a curve that's pointing up. So that would be um, a smiley face. And now you, know, you obviously have to felt it on and um, get that curve right. Or you could give it a sad face or a grumpy face. Then you could uh, make that curve go down. So have it as a downward curve, like a, a grumpy face. So then you have to felt it along accordingly. Just make sure that one side matches the other. So that's a grumpy face. And that's sort of um, a smiley a smiley face but make sure that one matches the other but today it's all about smiles we don't want to have sad faces we might have sad thoughts but we're still gonna um think of all the positives i nearly said we're just gonna have a um a happy face anyway but that that's way too british so we're just we're, we're just thinking of how of positive things and that will also put a smile on our face we don't have to pretend there we go Let's put that. Um, it's actually, Alicia, I uh, really enjoyed uh, you sharing something today, which I will mention. So um, that apparently, I can't remember now, it was a, it was definitely a mental health charity or a mental health um, saying that um, you always have to ask people twice how they are. Because the first time they're just going to say, yeah, I'm fine. The second time they might actually tell you the truth. Being German, I have... I have I always ask people twice how they are because I always know that the first answer is um is the is the British answer and then the second answer might be um the truthful answer so I when people say yeah I'm fine and you can tell they're not fine um and then I I always say are you sure you're fine are you really okay how are you really so um yeah I do I do that quite often however my daughter who was obviously brought up here in the UK when she says to me Mum, how are you? She also says straight away, don't give me the German answer to that. Just tell me you're fine. <laughs> you ask somebody how they are, you've got to expect that they tell you how they are. Right, so I've made this beak now while while I was chatting. So it's slightly curved up on that side and on the other side. And the, the test is when you look at it straight from the front that it's as symmetrical as you can master so you you you've basically now create a bottom part of the beak and a top part of the beak uh, by just separating this by going all the way from one side to the other side and that sort of should hopefully make like a, it looks a bit like a shark at the moment and you can stab this line in a bit more if you want and um there you go. I think that's good enough. That's symmetrical enough. So the next thing you're going to do with this shape is you're going to have to fasten it to the chicken. For this, you are broadening out the unfelted wispy ends. There, like that. And then you put it on the chicken's face. And yes, I know it now looks like it's got a yellow mask as well. But we don't mind so much about this because we're going to cover the joint um, the joint up later with, um, with red wool again or with that um, fox red wool. Just felt... Um, the the wool onto the chicken's face you could have I could have done that sooner you can take some of the yellow wisps off either before you even fasten it on or once you fasten it on so you don't actually add bulk we don't want to add bulk we just want to add um, the beak to the chicken's head and it sits literally underneath the um, the comb so make sure that there is not there's no gap between the comb and the and the um, beak and then you can um, felt into it again at a shallow angle so if I'm going um, if I'm going in I'm going to change needles again to go to my coarse needle if you're going in at a shallow at a shallow angle you can also shorten the beak still if your beak is a little bit too um, long for your liking there's no right or wrong as it as it goes in general but for your liking it might be um, too long so just felt straight into as close as you can get to the beak and um, at a shallow angle and that will fasten it on. Oh, it's getting wonky. Sorry, I've not felted it on very um, straight. Right, there we go. So, and then I'm tucking the, the yellow fibers away as best as I can. So hopefully, um, it's quite a long beak. This one is a little bit shorter. Um, and you can then also still do this sort of bending it slightly down so that you've got it more like a hawk beak as I said before and you can stab underneath the beak to do this to bring the beak um, down a bit so that that will also help to shape the beak once it's on I actually quite like it when it's sticking out straight 
it's definitely got a longer beak than the um the other chicken I made. So if I if I if that really bothered me, I could work a lot more on making that beak a bit shorter. But I, I do want them to be different. They're not twins, not identical twins anyway. And I think that's okay doing it that way. So to cover that join that um, you've just made with the yellow, you're just gonna. That's also another, by the way, another um, optical trick is to make the beak appear shorter when you cover the join with the uh, main color wool and just leave it sort of running along the beak a little bit because um, that will also make the beak appear smaller. Another, another tip here. Um, and then felt that into place so that you've got your... Um, area, the yellow area, invisible now underneath the red area or the, the orange, chicken, chicken orange area. There we go. So that basically has now added um, the comb and the beak there. And um, oh, I need to add a bit more wool here on the top. Little wisps there. That's it. So hopefully that um, is helping you to catch up too. I'm going to have a quick look what's happening here um, on on the uh, the chat site now. Um, Stephanie says mine is called Mabel. She is a mascot for my family pet shop. Oh, um, and what else have we got? Um, my chicken is called Big Bottom Bertha. She has rather la a large posterior. Oh, I like chickens with big bottoms. Um, Carol says, hope Natasha won't mind. I'm planning to use Rocky Rooster from the same film as my inspiration. Oh, I just, I think it's, I, I just love, love that, um, that um, Rocky Rooster that you uh, made, Natasha, so amazing. Um, Catherine says, hi, I just got here, delayed in a meeting, but I've done my thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Um, well, you rem remember, you can catch up anytime. Um, so Claire says, my chicken is going to be called Nugget as I'm a little behind and she's currently looks like a chicken nugget. <laughs> oh, as long as she doesn't turn into one. Um, Serena says, my chicken is called, um, Clucky as we had chickens when my son was little and he called the biggest one that used to come into the house clicky clucky oh i could just imagine little little boys doing that um trisha says oh hi trisha i don't think i've mentioned you yet mine is going to be called waddle with a wattle mm. <laughs> a, wad a waddling chicken with a wattle oh dear i in keeping with the book steffi it's so reassuring that it's not just me that can get words mixed up sometimes well i i said the other day i said something to my daughter and she said mom you do realize that's not what, what we say in england and um because she, she asked me to do five things all at the same time. And I said, what do you think I am? An all singing and dancing octopus. And um, she just pointed out that she'd never heard that expression <laughs> before. I'm sure there's something about an all singing and dancing something else. But I couldn't remember what that was. But I thought octopus is very relevant because they've got lots of arms. Um, um, oh, yes, I've got um, I've got the clover pink tool here as well, Alicia. So I can put that into action in a minute. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, my chicken is going to be called Marge. Years ago in Big Brother, they had chickens and one was called Marjorie, which then prompted one of my friends to have the nickname Marge. Oh, that's, that's a nice name. I don't know if your friend would be impressed to be, um, a chicken made after her, but, um, I think that's nice. I, I wouldn't mind having a chicken made that's called Steffi. Not that I'm hinting at anybody calling the chicken Steffi. <laughs> Oh, you'll win. You'll win. Definitely you'll win. Um, my chickens would be chuckle and giggle because that's the noises they make. <laughs> oh, love my recent purchase. Thank, thanks. Kelly at Sugarbush Squirrel in Boca, Florida. Ah, oh, Florida. I want to be in Florida right now. Love Florida. Um, yeah, I do like it. Um, Donna, oh, that will tell you a funny story first. Um, when I first went to Florida, it was actually on business and I will be honest, I am absolutely mortified of spiders. And of course my colleagues were saying, when you go 
and go to Florida, you do realize they have got really, really big spiders. So I, I, I very nearly didn't go because that was just too much to cope with. But they said, if you take some insect spray with you, you'll be fine. I have no idea how I got that through um, um, on the plane and back down on the other side. But we're talking probably about 25 years ago now. And um, I had, they said, take the insect spray with you. And then when you're in your, in your hotel room, never have the air conditioning on. And every morning you have to spray into um, the vent that comes into the hotel room. <laughs> and I did, of course, you know, because I'm gullible and, and um, stupid probably too. So um, I was absolutely mortified. Um, I, I, I lying in my bed in the hotel room in a non-air conditioned room at the hottest time of the year in Florida when um, <laughs> I was sweltering away, absolutely mortified, switching the air conditioning on because I thought the spiders would come in. And um, I never saw one, of course, because they, they weren't really where I was. They were somewhere in the Everglades, hidden away. And I was, I was, um, I was right a hotel right next to the beach. So <clears throat> anyway, it didn't happen. And I think I felt rather stupid afterwards. But here you go. That's what you do to um, your colleagues when they're gullible and um, naive. Um, anyway, going back to the chicken. Let's go back and um, work on her a little bit more. I want to read some more. Okay, I won't. I won't do that. We're, we're here to do chickens. That's it. Not not to please me with with all the comments. Okay, so now we've got a, a beak and we've got um, we've got it nicely covered. We're going to do the um, the all dancing and singing wattle or waddle if you like. And for this, we need another bit of red. I'm going to use the clover tool. There you go, Alicia. Just for you. And um, you're going to make a flat sheet again, um, but this time you're sort of doing um, more like an oblong um, piece and you tuck the wispy ends. It needs to be nice and round all around. And remember, lift it off your mat just so that you don't fasten it on. Turn over and felt on the other side as well. There. And tuck in the wispy ends everywhere there you go lift it off turn it round other side and once um, it's felted down as as firmly as your um, comb then you're going to um, tuck in the sides so what you in effect what you're doing is you're making two wattles all in one and you're tucking it in with your felting needle so that it's almost like a little bow tie so um, to do this you just stab in from the side either side and um, crinkle it up in the center remember you have to do this um, by lifting it off the mat as well you can also use a single needle it doesn't have to be the three needle felting tool it's probably easier to do it with a single needle because you can literally go into the side and not stuff so many fibers into your felting mat there you go so you've made like a little a little um, bow tie here and then that fits underneath the chicken's um, beak so right underneath it. And then all you do is you just stab into that um, um, crinkled up, ruffled up area that you've just made. And magically, the um, the two parts, two sides of that wattle, they sort of, they come together. So they're, because you're, because that is where you're, so instead of it being really flat on against the chicken, they sort of come together. And that's what you want um, for the wattle. And, um, and that um, leaves only the eyes to be made. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you because I want to spend time on the eyes. You can now decorate your chicken. You can use a little bit of white and give it sort of, um, I don't know, stripes down the front. When I say that, it's, it's meant to be feathers, of course, um, down the front like that and felt it on. And you can um, do this on the tail end as well so you could give it stripes here um just just decorate your chicken a bit um if you like like just like real chickens they've got all kinds of things going on there um keep it nice and wispy or not it's entirely up to you however you want to do this and um and then when you when you're ready um i'll give you a minute to catch up with me and i'll show you how to do the eyes I, I, by the way, I love needle felting eyes. It's one of my favorite things um, that I like doing. Um, I like it because you can be, you can make them so expressive, and you can um, really just have a play. Just make make yourself, um, or even flat felt it on a piece of um, on a piece of felt. Just play with eyes. Just try all kinds of different things. It's really it's really fun doing this. 
So um, there you go. What I will say is when the eyes are done, that's when we call the competition closed and then we'll, um, we will draw a winner. So um, yeah, that's basically what we'll do. And um, oh, I just love it when, when they sort of stand around and look, they're really quite funny looking birds. I really do like this chicken. You can do all kinds of things with her. She she could even, I mean, she, is, she could almost sort of squeeze a real size egg out, couldn't she? So you could have her as, um, as the guard of your egg basket in the kitchen. Or she'd be a great present for somebody who loves chickens. Um, you could stylize them if you're giving it to somebody who's got wears glasses. You could make little glasses from um, from wire. Um, you could give them an apron. Or I will talk about um, dressing the chicken in her Sunday best as well. I, I just realized that um, I did that last time. Um, so I will show you that because we've got um, a ready idea on our website for that as well. But I, I, sh I tell you that in a minute. Right, so let's um, crack on with the eyes. So I'm going to go to the overhead camera. Um, yeah, uh -huh, and all of that, yeah, no, we've done that. Uh, there we go, eyes. Now, I will just show you, obviously, if you've got our instructions, you have this um, instruction sheet, but I will just show it to you that what I normally do is I start out with a white, and then if you want the eye to look sort of quite menacing, <laughs> then you can actually put yellow or even red. You can mix wool, you can put orange with red in there as well. And then... um put another sort of ring around it and um, and put some really dark bushy eyebrows over the top that gives it quite a mean look right if you um, if you want to give it a dopey look then make sure that the eyebrows are falling over the eye so um, then they, they look sort of quite dopey um, positioning of the of the eye is quite important if you position it quite high up so you've got white um seeing white underneath it, it it also gives them a bit of a sheepish look if you place them right in the center it gives them a surprised look um yeah so there are lots of ways in which i'm i have two eyes to play with here so i'm gonna have a little go so start i'm gonna start with white make a white disc here there are lots of ways how people make eyes. This is just how I like playing around with them. You might find different things work for you. We, of course, also have the glue um, in eyes. So um, you could still use them as well as um, preparing the outer of the eye as well. Um, I think if you needle felt the eye, you've got more scope for giving them um, different impressions. So the um, chickens actually have got, we've got quite... I don't know, they've got quite ugly eyes, I think. Um, but, they, you know, they probably think they're very beautiful. And you will you will love your chicken's eyes because they're your chicken's eyes. I'm going to mix a little bit of this orange and the yellow <clears throat> to make a new mix. And I'm going to put a ring around um, the, the um, white that I've just done. So uh, there are lots of ways of how you can make the eye appear bigger or smaller. Um, so I'm just going to make that into a strand. I'm going to literally fit that around the eye. You can make the eye arm and shape. Um, that's sort of often quite, looks quite pretty. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's nothing to worry about, promise you. So I'm just felting that on now. I'm making this up as I'm going along, by the way. What I will suggest is if you're making one eye, then try to make the other one. <laughs> same or your chicken could potentially look a little bit strange there we go um and you could just um add a little bit of black in the center now so i'm just going to show you how um uh, the eye will look different of the different positions if you put it quite high up it looks as if the, as if the chicken is looking up at you right so it's like a quite a sheepish look if you put the eye down, it's maybe it's looking for some corn or you could put it um, to the front. So you know where when you position. So this is suddenly changing it because it's looking um, it's looking down. If you put it right to the front, it might be looking down to some corn. So wherever you put. Sorry, I'm making all the white uh, with black fibers now. So it, it's looking quite sort of like. Yeah, it's looking in the direction wherever you're putting it. So let's leave it there. And um, 
And then um, to give it a, a point, a reflection point, you need to use a tiny, 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 tiny amount of white um, and just put it in onto the black. You almost felt it away as if it's not there anymore, but it is still there. And then you look away yourself and then and then you don't even notice it anymore that it's there. So this chicken looks sort of quite curious, I suppose, looking maybe at the corn. Um, I'll just show you on the big camera and then um, I'll move on. So there, there you go. That's that's quite a it's quite a nice innocent young eye. Somebody who's maybe looks like a studious person or or something like that. I don't know. Depends depends who you want to make. Now the fun comes if you when you add an eyebrow. Um, you can make that sort of like a quite a um, a stern dark eyebrow by mixing maybe a bit of um, black into with with a um, with a muted orange we've got here. And um, you can straight away, you can see straight away, as soon as you put it on, I can add sort of a sinister look or like a, a cross look or a strict look or whatever you want to call it. So um, you can put that on there um, and just felt it around the edges first. You're going to have so much fun with these eyes. Um, so that that is... Um, that's one way of doing it. I'm, I'm going to take this off again, but it has changed the look altogether. Um, to keep with a surprised look, you could have an eyebrow that um, could be sort of slightly higher. And, you know, you could have it like a really thin line. Maybe it's a very, maybe this uh, this chicken plucks her eyebrows. So you could give it um, a very neat little eyebrow there. Um, you could, if you, if you want to make it sort of look quite crossed and put that, put the put it to the front if you um want it to look more sort of like I don't know friendly then put it at the back so there's uh, lots of scope with playing with bushy eyebrows are great they're very expressive um you can close the eye a little bit more and um and you can put it or you can raise them more so that's that's the different options um for eyebrows and there are loads more of options um of course as well you could even fill in the white with a different color. Now, I think somebody wants to see the feet again. I, I'm assuming it's the feet that I've already made because I'm obviously not going to make the feet from beginning to end again. The ones that are here on this chicken, they are the ones that are made with um, the florist tape and I've wrapped them and they're quite, I think that's a really good, they're really good chicken legs. They're nice and smooth, so there's no wool on the outside. Um, there's wool underneath because we had to build up the uh, the wire so it's a bit fatter and then it's just been neatly wrapped with florist tape florist tape works by stretching it and it becomes sticky the legs that i've made on this chicken here um they have been made again with wool wrap the wire and then i've absolutely soaked them with a dr clear drying pva glue and um and they they're really they're quite i don't know if you can hear that but they're quite they're very they feel very plasticky and um, they look a bit more scaly, and I've painted the toenails black. Um, and they're, they're great too, definitely. You can also just have them um, with wool, that's fine too. So um, that's basically what I've done with the feet. So there's the surprised looking chicken. Um, so that's one, one way of making an eye there, the legs again, if you need to see them close up. They, they, the chicken stands absolutely solid um, on her feet. So really, it's a, because it's a very light um, project and the legs are secure in there, really secure. You can bring the bloomers, her chicken bloomers, um, close to the top of her foot. That's sort of a detail you can add. I'm going to make a second eye now. Um, I feel a bit bad making a different eye on the other side. <laughs> no, poor chicken. I have to uh, maybe make the same later. So just to repeat it, add a little bit of white into the area where the eye is going to go. Is this if this is your second eye, then do make definitely make sure that it's in the, on the same level as the first one because you don't want to have one high up, one lower, or one right at the front of the beak and one almost at the back of the head. So make sure they're they're in this on the same level. You can give it um, a surround. You could even give it like a dark surround. You can do that too. Like it's um sort of like an eyeliner going around the eye here. Um, just felt the wool down as you go along. 
tuck it in where it needs tucking in. You can make that a nice shape. You can make that more of an almond shape. This is not what chicken's eyes are for real. Okay, this is you. You're giving it a stylized eye to suit your to suit the character of your chicken. Um, you could add if you wanted to. You could um, now. What have I done here? You could give it sort of more of an evil look. If you like by putting a bit of um, a, a red um, or an orange yellow mix into the eye there instead of having a white the white there you just give it like it's, it's had lots of booze lots of chicken chicken gin or something I don't know if that exists then you don't have to give it a black pupil you could give it a, a, um, a different color pupil but I'm going to give this one a a black pupil so this sort of looks more like um, it already already looks different just having um, less of a, um, a bright white um, um, surround remember the reflection point tiny tinsy tiny weeny little bit of white stop that into the center of the black make sure it's stopped in as much as you can almost this on the verge of disappearing but not quite. And then, um, well, you could just leave it like that. Don't have to give it eyebrows or anything. Could give it eyelashes. So two very different eyes um, add different expressions. This one here has got um, it's got dark, bushy eyebrows. And um, and I think that's pretty much how you um, can do the eyes. So let's go back to the front camera. Um, my device here that had all the comments has actually just died. So I'm going to have to read it from far away on the screen here. I'm trying not to squint. Um, if um, Alicia, you can, you are ready to uh, pick the winner now. And while you're doing that, I'm going to just uh, show you quickly how you could um, give your chicken um, a pretty dress. So I'm going to use some felt for this. Just, uh, uh, let's see if that's big enough. Oh, these scissors cut too much wire with these scissors. They don't fit anymore. No, that's definitely not big enough. So basically, um, we have got a, a template on our on our free tutorials of how to make a little waistcoat. But of course, that template or how we've made that is for a tiny, tiny creature. If you want to make one for a chicken, you sort of need enough that uh, fits. If you if you um, Depends how open you want it to be at the front. So this could be a little bit longer. I'm just going to cut a slightly longer one. Um, and when I say longer, I don't mean longer. I mean wider. So um, this is a slightly wider one. And then what you do is, so I just show you overhead. So you've got got that piece of felt. We use the um, viscous um, wool mix felt. And where the wings are roughly here, that is where you've got to. You need to just mark it here and there. And I just heard we've got a winner now as well. And the winner is Catherine Fish. Well done, Catherine. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting two armholes. This is completely um, made up now. Two armholes into. Um, Please do go and have a look on our website. I'm just literally putting a slit into this piece of there, two armholes. They're probably not quite big enough, so I'm going to make them a little bit bigger by extending them, just by making the um, putting slits on the bottom and on the base. So the next thing I'm going to do is because I want it to be a rounded, and this is very unneat because I've just cut it. So I'm going to round the edges off by um, going and cut around, give them round edges. And I'm doing this on one side, so to get the other side the same, I'm just gonna find that armhole there, and I'm going to do that around the other side to make it symmetrical. I am the worst dressmaker on the planet. If you need to plan this out with some centimeter uh, tape measure or anything like this, feel free, I won't judge you, as long as you don't judge me for making these things up as I go. And then, so you've basically, you've got a large waistcoat, just like the one that we um, have on our free tutorial page. And all you need to do now is uh, dress the chicken. So put her wings through the armhole there. 
all the way around. You might have to cut a little bit out so the tail doesn't get compromised. There, so now she's got um, she's got her little waistcoat and then you just fold over the top for a collar, there, like that. And um, and then all you need to do is you can, um, you can um, I don't know, pin this together with a button or, um, well, it's actually just about, you could just make a little, um, cut a little um, um, special thing out here for the tail. There you go. And she's all, she's all dressed and ready to um, best for her Sunday, for Easter Sunday, maybe. There you go. She's got a nice um, waistcoat on. Um, you can um, fasten that up. And that brings us to the end of the chicken tutorial, but I've got lots of things to say that I haven't said. So first of all, we have got now for sale our butterfly. Where's that thing gone? Um, where can I put it? We've got a butterfly that we're making with the Creative Craft Shows. Oh, well, you don't need to see the box. But what you're getting in your butterfly uh, pack um, is enough to make two butterflies, um, two they're actually called small tortoiseshell butterflies. You get one box frame to display your butterfly. It does come with a glass, but I like it that the butterfly can fly away anytime it wants to, and one has already escaped. So you get everything in there to make two butterflies, and this will be um, all supervised, or not supervised, that sounds a bit formal, will all be um, helped with a, a, a tutorial, a 90-minute tutorial on the 17th of April. I have actually got some um, written details here so you can just watch it uh, on the screen. So it's a small tortoiseshell butterfly workshop on the 17th and I know the time now because it's at 12 p.m. in the felt den. We are sponsoring the felt den as the makers but you have to uh, be able to access the um, Facebook group the felting den which you get through the entry that you uh, buy for £7.99 but that doesn't just give you the uh, butterfly tutorial that gives you 50 different um, um, tutorials workshops and talks and demonstrations on, um, on all on craft some on felt some on embroidery some on sewing all kinds of things but that's um, all available for you for £7.99 and of course you can revisit that anytime so get your Butterfly pack now, you have to go onto the um onto their um page and it is oh I've forgotten now. Anyway, let's have a look at that thing again. I've forgotten now where you can get the uh, the ticket and buy the thingy, but it tells you on there it's the just just find the um creative craft show online shop. If you if you Google that, that should oh maybe I've got it written here. Yes, I have. So it's shop dot creativecraftshow.co.uk I knew I had it still around somewhere so that's where you go to get your um, your butterfly pack and where you can uh, follow the link to get your ticket for £7.99 it's a brilliant brilliant deal um, so I feel I need to stand this chicken up and then secondly remember next week is finally is the time when we're going to do our daisy chain I am so excited by this I shall wear it um, I should have worn it today, shouldn't I? It goes really nicely with that jumper, actually. Um, so you can make a daisy chain with me um, next Tuesday. If you haven't got your daisy chain pack yet, then do go and get that as well. Oh, I found the box for the butterfly as well. That's basically what you're getting for the butterfly. And uh, it's not just this type of daisy chain, which is water-soluble paper and uh, needle felting onto it. You, I will also show you how to make um, a daisy uh, needle felted onto felt so you can put them on wire stems so you'll be all ready for spring um, mentally and you look ready and everything else as well so join us um, on Tuesday at 1 p.m for that as well remember it's um, the last um, few days to get your dragon and um, um, your dragon makers box which makes one amazing dragon <sighs> I've seen some great ones as well. So you can make this from our Makers Box sub subscription box. You have got time to get your little fairy made from the fairy box. This is the rainbow fairy. Um, rainbows always remind me of um, of births and end of life as well, but um, in a nice way. So remember to get your rainbow fairy. Maybe you will make one in memory of somebody you loved. And, um, and you can get your surprise box, which is... Um, themed Easter so 
lots to do, lots to look forward to. Um, April will be a great month with uh, live streams as well. We've got a, a three-part um, masterclass on how to do 2D needle felting, landscape needle felting, and I'm really excited by this as well. Um, we will be putting some stuff up very soon so you can uh, make sure that you get notification when those tutorials are coming. And then, of course, next month's um, Maker's Box is the Puffin, and it is also um, the... Um, Daisy Fairy, which um, I love too, goes really well with the daisies. And the surprise box is Cherry Blossoms. And there is a lot of hints for that as well. If you watch the Daisy tutorial with the water soluble paper, because you can make some amazing cherry blossoms with water soluble paper as well. Right, that's all from me today. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Well done, Catherine, for winning today on Tuesday, the 23rd of March. If you are winning this on Thursday, it will be another person, but well done um, to you as well. Thursday um, will be on at seven o'clock on Facebook on our main page, The Makers. So make sure you watch. And just to remind you, next week, Tuesday, is the Needle Felted Daisy Chain. And I think I have said everything probably about five times over. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to shut up now. I'll thank you all very much for tuning in. Thank you for giving us the thumbs up and I'll see you all um, next week. Take care, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the spring if you can. <laughs>